Welcome to the Art Lady's Home. I want to share with you my little antique rose, Clotilde Sapeau. And she is 1890. She's from the 1890s. And I seem to have found that antique roses do a little bit better in my zone because I'm so hot, humid, and we also have nematodes in our soil. So I found that these antique roses do a bit better for me. And I want to share with you one of my success stories. And she is about two years old. And she's on a temporary uh, little support. But I'm going to eventually build a pillar for her here. I have a mini. Let me step back so you can see it. I planted her in my front walkway in a little triangular section here. And I'm gonna build a little kind of an obelisk for her. But I was pleased with her growth in two years. She did really well. And I purchased her at Antique Rose Emporium. And she's, I would say an average you know, this is what I could typically expect from two years growth on a rose. I do have another one and I'll do a separate video on her, which is a Katrina rose for Central Florida. And she grows in two years. She did this whole arbor here. She scaled the arbor within two years. So that's really exceptional. But this is what I was basically expecting after two years growth for most of my roses here. And Clotilde here is about, I'd say six feet tall so far. And she'll wrap around that little obelisk that I'm gonna build pretty, you know, pretty nicely. I'm gonna share with you a little bit about the soil cause that's real important when you're growing roses. What I did was after I built this little triangle raised bed, then what I did was I removed about a foot, a foot and a half of the dirt, the original dirt. And then I used uh, mushroom compost, a bag of cow manure, some, some topsoil, some purchased topsoil. And then I filled it all in with that kind of a dirt. So I replaced all of the original Florida soil with store-bought dirt. And then what I did was I planted the rose in that. And I also added some peat moss too because I use that a lot in my growing. It just helps retain moisture in my zone because in Florida, Central Florida Zone 9, our hot summers just bake the soil. And I think that peat moss helps retain some of that moisture. So that's important too. But I use mushroom compost and that I think is a big secret too. I have a load of mushroom compost dumped every few years and I put that in my soil so I think that improves that soil texture so the soil is real important especially with roses because of the nematodes I've also give it rose tone fertilizer and then for the last few months I've started some liquid fertilizer for this as well and with the liquid fertilizer I think it just gives it a jump start and that's why I think it was more successful this year. But I wanted to show you how she's in pretty bloom here. And I do want to show you the buds because sometimes here in Central Florida where we have a lot of rain right here and sometimes the buds look a little brownish on the ends before she opens up. And if I'm gonna take her inside, you can see how this has a little bit of brown tip. So if I'm gonna take this inside and put it in a vase, I'll clip this, these little edges here. I'll show you what she looks like when she's inside. And this one is Clotilde Sapir in a vase. And these are just little tiny mums that I picked up at Walmart in a bouquet. My son picked them up for me and she looks really pretty. I have her in this small, because they have very short stems. So I have her in this little basket. I'll show you another one over here. And I like them tucked into these, you know, filler flowers. These little guys I call filler flowers. 
But the roses, when I bring them inside, that you know, that's just pure joy. If you, for all of you who you know grow roses, we know that when we bring them inside, it's just joy for us. And this one's just a simple uh, Lowe's rose, actually. And it's a purple one. So I just thought it was really pretty to put it in this little basket for Easter. But that's what she looks like. And she's just gorgeous. These are my favorite type of roses. These antique type roses, which almost looks like a bourbon type rose. With the cabbage style. That's my favorites. But this one is doing pretty good too. I'm growing this one in a pot outside. And that one's doing well. If I, buy, if I purchase roses from like Lowe's, then I'll grow them in pots so that they're not in the ground. And I found that that works out a little bit better too. But there's my little antique girl and she does really well. And I've had success with roses from Antique Rose Emporium before, which is a mail order place out of Texas for us. But there is my beautiful little vase. And this looks really pretty too as a mini, in a mini vase too. A little tiny cup, cup vase. Again, they have real short stems because it's in a cluster. They bloom in a cluster. So it's, uh, you know, you have, you can't do the long stem rose vases. But there she is. And I hope you learned a little bit about the Clotilde Sapir.